Welcome to the second annual Let It Be New concert by Cincinnati Song Initiative. I'm so happy to welcome you to this digital experience as we celebrate the work of 10 composers who have taken part in this year's Composer Mentorship Program through the National Association of Teachers of Singing. Alongside eight months of mentorship by world-renowned composers of song, these 10 mentees received a commission from CSI, each for a single song, which we are thrilled to share with you today here for the very first time. I'd like to thank Lori Lehman for her major support of this year's program, alongside fellow program leader Tom Chapulo, all the other composer mentors, and Alan Henderson at Nats. I'd also like to thank the premier performers who brought each of these new songs to life with a pioneering and collaborative spirit. The positive communication and open dialogue between composers and performers provides a very happy glimpse into the future of American art song and the many creative minds that can help shape meaningful art that speaks to communities throughout this country. If you're new to Cincinnati Song Initiative, welcome, and I sincerely hope that you will join us in the future for one of our live performances or innovative digital media projects. If you feel moved by today's premieres, please consider giving generously to support the work of future composers as part of this innovative and unique experience. And now, thank you for being here, and please enjoy Let It Be New 2022. Hello, I'm Mikhail Johnson, a composer for the next piece you're about to hear, which is Anansi and Fire. I would like to first thank the National Association of Teachers of Singing and the Cincinnati Song Initiative with special support from Lori Leitman for this amazing opportunity and commission. And I would like to tell you a little bit about Anansi. Anansi the spider is a very prominent folklore character from West Africa, which has made its way into the diaspora to my native country, which is Jamaica. And usually uh, Anansi is known as this trickster person who uses very clever tactics to get what he wants. And so in this scenario, however, uh, he meets his match where fire becomes the one who ends up doing the trickery to Anansi. And so within this piece, I try to create these humorous moments and using a lot of evocative Jamaican rhythms and dance forms in a way. And they kind of warp in and out of themselves to really create the scene and, and paint a picture. It's more like text painting, if you will. Uh, so without further ado, Anansi and Fire, enjoy. Anansi and Fire were good, good friends. So Anansi went to see Fire, and together they had dinner. Then the time came, then the time came, when Anansi invited Fire to come and see so fire went to come to a Nazi house. Ground of and ground of torn 
Nazi, run of toward a Nazi. No, you mustn't eat my fire. No, you mustn't eat my fire. Hi, my name is Eric Franklin, and I'm a clarinetist and composer based in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, I'm happy to share with you my song entitled A Greeting, based on a William H. Davies poem of the same name. The song opens with a sleepy sunrise, followed by a brisk morning walk, complete with blue skies, bird songs, flowers, and as Mr. Davies says, all things bright and beautiful. During the pandemic, nature has often been a place for all of us to find comfort and joy, and I hope these feelings come across in the song. Thank you to the Cincinnati Song Initiative, to Lori Laitman and all the folks at Nats for making this program possible. Thank you to my mentor, Evan Mack, for helping me grow as a composer during our time together. And thank you to all the performers today, including Ben and Mario, for lending their artistry to this music. I hope you enjoy.
I love people, and that's exactly what this piece is about. So I came across this poem by Sarah Teasdale, um, and the narrator is sort of talking about all these people around her, these faces, and sort of observing them. But as the poem progresses, she realizes she is not the observer, she's also being observed by these people. Um, so I sort of came up with this, this people theme, very chaotic, um, but as the piece develops and she realizes what's happening, um, the people theme returns and it becomes um, slightly manipulated and it's backwards and you know all sorts of things are happening because I think being seen by people is very validating but also a little bit terrifying um, and I love that sort of dichotomy between relationships. Um, I had a blast writing this piece working with Dr. Maria Corley. Thank you so much for all of your guidance and help. Um, thank you to the Christinas for their incredibly artistic performance. Thank you to everyone who involved who made this project possible. I'm so grateful to be among these incredible artists on this concert. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Joseph Jones, and I am here to introduce my song, Alone. A setting of a poem by Sarah Teasdale. This work for tenor and piano explores themes of love, loss, grief, isolation, and mortality. It is lyrical, contemplative, introspective, and the interplay between tenor and piano balances out all the themes their respective voices. I hope you enjoy this.
Hello, my name is Molly Beth Hennig, and thank you for listening to my piece for soprano and piano, Sister of the Sky. This song sets the text of two brief poems by Sarah Teasdale. One is her poem, Morning, and the other is Autumn Dusk. These two poems, when standing next to each other, represent all opposing elements of nature. Space and earth, morning and evening, spring and autumn, movement and stillness, meadows and hills. The poems also express the same message, that of finding agency and hope in the natural world. I merged the two poems to form a single song. Sister of the Sky has a ternary structure, setting the first stanza of Morning in the first section, the entirety of Autumn Dusk in the contrasting second section, and the second stanza of Morning in the return of the first section that ends the piece. I would like to thank my mentor, Lori Leitman, and the Cincinnati Song Initiative for their support in bringing this piece to life, and I hope you enjoy the performance.
Hi, this is Mark Nigo, the composer of The Extinction of the Dinosaurs, with text by David Joe. David Joe is uh, not only a poet, but also a doctor in physics and a retired teacher at the Barcelona University. I've always been interested in the intersection between uh, science and arts, and I find that both uh, David Joe and this poem in particular are fine examples of this. Um, to me, the text of the extinction of the dinosaurs warns us about our relationship with the planet we live in and uh, reminds us uh, of our vulnerability, of our condition of creatures, just like any other creature living in this planet. And finally, it also serves as a call for empathy towards all uh, living forms of life, uh, currently living or extinct. Um, so I hope that you will like uh, this setting and uh, thank you very much.
So it all started exactly two years, three months, and five days ago uh, when I woke up to many, many, many suspicious charges to my bank account. We are literally talking about uh, purchases that range anywhere from buying a kayak all the way down to a small bag of Jelly Bellies. Uh, after uh, several phone calls, some secret meetings, uh, a bagel, uh, I ended up having to answer questions in life that seemed completely irrelevant at the time. Uh, then I realized that uh, sometimes you face situations in life where you aren't sure how to react. Uh, I'm pretty good at that in general, but uh, sometimes you end up answering these questions without knowing the reasons or the results. Uh, is it sad or is it funny? Do I laugh? Do I cry? So I ended up going through these motions without any emotions. Rewind to 120 days ago, and I wrote a song about it. I 
Winter Sister is a song cycle featuring five poems by Catherine Pond. Catherine dedicated these poems to her friend Julia Anna Morrison, whose brother died when they were teenagers. In these poems, Catherine remembers this painful period of her life, pays tribute to her friendship with Julia, and recalls the other forces to which she turned for comfort and guidance through her grief, such as her mother and her writing. I hope that my musical setting of Catherine's poetry resonates with everyone who has experienced loss during this difficult time, that these songs and Catherine's words make you feel less alone in your pain, and that they remind you of the relationships that you hold close to your heart. I'd like to thank Catherine for her permission to use this text, Nat CSI and Lori Laitman for commissioning me, Libby Larson for her mentorship, and Anne Toomey and Sam Martin for bringing these songs to life.
Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Neer, mezzo-soprano, composer, and coach in Portland, Oregon. If Starlight Be sets the first two stanzas of a poem by Ohio poet Felicia Zamora. Zamora's poetry uses light and electromagnetic radiation as metaphors for our own energy and agency while calling out injustice in our nation and our world. With such a powerful text, I knew the music had to be equally intense virtuosic and active, expressing the full sweep of emotion. So you're going to hear the singer and the pianist use their full ranges, performing this energetic, fierce music. You'll also hear moments of vulnerability where the texture thins and we have a moment to float in space. A huge thank you to Christina and Christina for their phenomenal performance, Cincinnati Song Initiative, Nats, and especially my mentor in this program, Tom Japulo. I hope you enjoy the piece. Thank <laughs> you. 
Eyewitness Account is a standalone song and the first in a group of three songs for baritone and piano, collectively called A World of Flying Saucers. The text is taken from uh, this book by the same name, which is a compendium of all things UFOlogy, which is the official name given to the study of unidentified flying objects. And so when I surveyed the vast landscape of art songs written on this topic, I thought to myself, well, there's a niche I can fill. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Every time I try to pass, it speeds up 
and every time I slow down, it slows down too. It's making me nervous. chased it like this for about 50 miles, maybe even 60. I know what I saw. 